Director Joseph Jun's documentary film, Heronimo, The Untold Tales of Koreans in Cuba, depicts life of the Korean Cuban community's respected leader, the late Heronimo Lim. The serendipitous nature of how everything started uh, to, to remind themselves of who they are and where they come from. Over the span of three years, director Joseph Chun traveled 17 cities in four countries, including Cuba, to film Heronimo, the work that embodies his passion for telling the stories of overseas Koreans in different parts of the world. They compliment to me, so I think I've maybe done a little bit of my share. Director Joseph Chun himself is a Korean American who used to work as a lawyer in New York. He unfolded the second chapter of his life as a film director. Profound stories delivered by director Joseph Jenna Waite on today's Heart to Heart. Welcome to the studio. Thank you so much for joining us today, Joseph. Um, we just took a look at a scene, mm -hmm. uh, or rather a group of people singing Arirang, which is a very meaningful song to Koreans. Mm -hmm. I would say that any Korean would listen to the song or even watch that scene and uh, it might even bring tears to their eyes, sure. right? Um, so I'd like to ask you about that scene from mm -hmm. your documentary film, mm -hmm. He Heronimo, mm -hmm. and could you also tell us about this documentary film? Sure. Um, it certainly did bring tears to my eyes mm -hmm. when I was documenting that. I didn't know they were going to sing Arirang. Ah. Uh, what happened was, uh, so there's a small town called Gardenas mm -hmm. in, in Cuba. Uh, there's a group of young and old Korean descendants of Cuba that get together on a regular basis. Uh, to, to remind themselves of who they are and where they come from. Mm -hmm. Singing Arirang is part of that ritual, and we were lucky to be there when they uh, had that meeting. Uh, my film, Heronimo, is about a Korean fighter who fought in the Cuban Revolution, who later serves in the Cuban government mm -hmm. and becomes a vice minister. But after his retirement, he goes through a serious transformation and decides to dedicate the rest of his life, reconstructing and rebuilding his sense of Korean identity mm -hmm. and the Korean community in Cuba. So what made you, I mean, initially, what made you decide to cast light upon uh, Korean Cubans? Uh, I think one of the most magical elements of this whole project is the serendipitous nature of how everything started. Uh, I, was a, I was an attorney in New York. At the end of two, 2015, I decided to go on a backpacking trip to uh -huh. Cuba. And the first person I met at the airport um, who came to pick me up from a hostel I booked, uh -huh. um, happens to be a middle-aged Asian woman. I got curious and I asked her, Are you, would you happen to be Chinese? Ah, I see. And she says, no, I'm third generation Korean. Uh -huh. uh, I later discovered that she's a daughter of Heronimo, who was mm -hmm. the main character of my film. Yes. And uh, the rest is history. <laughs> So, I mean, it all began from this coincidental meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so she actually had come to the airport to pick you up, to take you to the hostel that you uh, were planning on staying at. Right. Now, you briefly mentioned that you are, you were mm -hmm. an attorney, so you were an attorney turned film director now. Sure. Uh, now, these two fields are vastly different, very different. Mm -hmm. But I understand that um, you know you took charge of the scripting, to the filming, mm -hmm. to even the editing. You did it all on your own? It was extremely difficult. <laughs> and one thing to mention is I did study film back in undergraduate. I see. Uh, but never did I work as a professional filmmaker mm -hmm. or editor or any of that sort. So everything was a learning process for mm -hmm. me. 
I had to basically educate myself on how to do everything that you just forementioned. Mm. Um, and hence, it took me three years to complete this project. How long did it take for you to put this project, this uh, documentary film together? And I understand mm. that you met many, many people. I cannot count them because it goes over 60 people. Ah. Uh, but the truth of the matter is uh, I went to Cuba for backpacking at the end of 2015 mm -hmm. and I started fundraising. So when I first went to Cuba, that was um, August of 2016. Mm -hmm. From that point on, I traveled to four different countries, 17 different cities, um, and met with over 60 people who basically crossed paths with Jeronimo at some ah, point in their yeah. lives. Uh -huh. So I, I became very obsessed with uh, finding out who Jeronimo is uh -huh. through the voices of others. Um, if you could perhaps maybe uh, tell us about one person, I mean, is there a single person? I mean, who happens mm -hmm. to be uh, of the 60-some people that you met mm -hmm. uh, while you worked on this project uh, remains most memorable and also why? Um, it's a person I haven't met, which is Jeronimo. I see. Jeronimo passed away mm -hmm. 12, 13 years ago now. Everyone was talking about Jeronimo mm -hmm. and how I'm careful to use this word, how divine he was mm. in many respects. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I truly felt like I've discovered an, an unsung hero that is not known wi widely to the public. Yes. Um, but aside from Heronimo, if, if I have to pick one, mm -hmm. there's another Korean descendant that we ran into by, by, by sheer accident. Mm -hmm. And he happens to be the oldest Korean descendant living in Cuba. Oh. And, uh, it's a long story, and it's, a, it's a sort of a spoiler from the movie. Okay. So I'll <laughs> keep that to the audience to watch. All right, I yeah. see. So we're going to have to watch the film to find Please. out more. <laughs> now, uh, the interviews, um, most of the interviews are at least, uh, is it 35 or more? Uh, correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. they were condu conducted in Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, do you speak Spanish? Are you fluent in... Poquito. Un poquito. Un poquito. Yes, same no. here. That's all I know how to say. <laughs> That's all I know um, how to say either. Then the translation yeah. must have been very difficult. Uh, did you maybe work with a professional translator? No, so this goes on to speak to uh, the overwhelming support that I received from mm. so many different people. Mm -hmm. um, I've received fundings from over 500 people uh, through Kickstarter and other means. Uh -huh. um, and at least a dozen people volunteer to uh, translate either from English to Korean, Korean mm. to English, Spanish to Korean, and Spanish to English, and uh -huh. so forth. One particular um, lady, I must say, um, reached out to me on social media one day. Mm -hmm. This is soon after I came back from my second Cuba trip. Why don't I help you for free? Oh, my. Um, and help you translate all your interviews. And uh -huh. Obviously, I thought it was a scam. <laughs> <laughs> I thought someone was going after my footage. It's too good to be true. Or, exactly. Yes. It was too good to be true. Uh -huh. So I did my uh, own due diligence. Mm -hmm. I looked her up and you know, I verified her credentials. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, we hopped onto a Skype phone. And I was able to place her name with her face and knew that she was a genuine supporter. Mm -hmm. And so I started sending her files, interview files. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, for about eight, nine months, she sent me a, a perfectly translated and tran uh, transcribed wow. um, uh, Spanish, uh, Spanish to English. Mm -hmm. uh, so you revisited Cuba in 2016. Mm -hmm. So this is when you actually revisited Cuba with your camera mm -hmm. to actually start sure. filming this project. Mm -hmm. uh, how many hours of footage does the uh, film include? And I also want to ask um, how long the documentary film is. Mm -hmm. So the entire film, hovers around 250 hours. Um, and I, my cha the challenge was to cut that down to a 90 minute film. Mm -hmm. And so currently I have a 90 minute version, mm -hmm. uh, which is likely to be the final version. When I first initiated this project, mm -hmm. I've envisioned maybe this turning into a 30 minute YouTube clip, mm -hmm. right? I didn't think of anything of this scale that this will evolve into something much larger oh, than see. myself. Uh -huh. So mainly due to my lack of capabilities mm -hmm. uh, and because I didn't know what I was really getting myself into. Mm -hmm. um, it took much, much longer than I would hope for. Mm -hmm. um, and yet uh, I took all that time really deliberating um, what would be the best way to storytell and pay a proper tribute mm -hmm. uh, to this really great character, Heronimo Lim. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's 250 hours, did you say? That's correct. And you had to cut that down to 90 minutes. I yeah. mean, oh. 
How do you make such decisions? I mean, when it comes to editing, you know, you want to keep every scene, everything that you filmed, you want to include it into the film, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's not possible, I guess. Um, so, I mean, even when it comes to, I guess, editing our program, it's mm -hmm. a 20 some minute program, mm -hmm. and we have our whole team working on this one program, they start to edit, they go back and find something else to edit, to add or either take out. So it's, it's, it sounds like a very long process, an ongoing process. Sure. How is it for you? Uh, so a lot of people say that documentary, uh -huh. the real work is made in documentaries during the post-production process, mm. right? Um, and that was certainly the case with me. Mm -hmm. The reason I mm, went back to Cuba to shoot and to start this project was because uh, the, the only solid information that I had on Jeronimo uh -huh. was that he fought in the Cuban Revolution as a Korean mm. person and that he worked with Che Guevara. And uh, for me, I, I grew up reading Motorcycle Diaries by Che Guevara. Mm. I used to really idolize him as a, a young, idealistic person myself. Uh -huh. The idea that this iconic global figure, uh, Che Guevara, there's a, a Korean working side by Che, mm. uh, really, really blew me away. And so he literally transformed the Korean community in Cuba. And I wanted to discover as much as I can mm -hmm. within the limited resources and time. And so, early, as I mentioned earlier, I had, at the end of the day, 250 hours of footage that I didn't know what to do with. Um, so post-production, the editing process was really dismantling that everything that I had mm -hmm. and reconstructing a story of this humble hero, uh -huh. I, would, I would call. Wow. And so, uh, obviously, there are many sleepless nights with caffeine, uh, mm -hmm. arguing with, fiercely arguing with my editor. Sure. <laughs> uh, people say that um, uh, a director typically never works with one editor only throughout the whole process. Because Is that because you argue and then you yes, kind of fall Yes, there's a divorce process. <laughs> ah, I see, I see. Mm -hmm. But uh, my editor has been wonderful. Uh, he, him being Cuban, he was able to shed lights on uh, the uh. Cuban historical site that I wasn't aware of. Mm -hmm. uh, so with my Korean and American knowledge and his Cuban knowledge mm -hmm. came together. And I think we finally came to a decent piece. I mean, mind you that I don't think any creators uh, finally look at their product and say, hey, I'm satisfied with mm -hmm. this. I'm never satisfied with this, but yes. at least I can tolerate what, what we have now. Mm -hmm. So. I think uh, it might be wonderful for us to actually take a look, you know, mm -hmm. take a peek at the highlights of Heronimo. So sure. let's do that and then continue on talking about Heronimo Lim and much more. So let's take a look. Sure. My name is Nelson Lim. I'm the grandson of Heronimo Lim King, a Korean who fought in the Cuban Revolution. It's a story of return. The story of Koreans in Cuba is one of search for self and search for a home away from home. They worked as the slaves, literally, all their lives. You understand? They're slaves. It's uh, one of the saddest stories you ever want to hear. While well, Fidel Castro was in the, in the mountains, in the city, there was clandestine group. Jeronimo was part of that. Era una actividad secreta. Los detalles no se daban, aunque fuera familia. Jackson, yo solté. Pan Batista, tú che, tú che en el chamio es eso. ¿Cómo que? Tú lo ves. Al máximo, chunga. Cuba y la revolución cubana seguirían luchando y seguirían resistiendo. He said that he was recruited to be a spy. Hubo un episodio en su vida. Él visitó Corea del Norte. The people of Cuba are living in a crisis, a special period. 아버님 말씀을 제가 너무 안 들은 것 같아. 전체성을 지켜야 된다. 좋은 한국이다. Como mismo se dedicó principio a trabajar para el gobierno con esa misma ese mismo entusiasmo se dedicó a trabajar por la asociación. Combinan pillón paseo. Ninguna completamente. Estoy convencida segura. Shocking and yegi yo, gracias. Ana Imundo Unida. Honor Kipunal Unida. Now it is our turn to continue Jerónimo's legacy.
So that was Im Eunjo, mm -hmm. Heronimo Lim. Uh, could you tell us more about Heronimo Lim? I'll be happy to. Mm -hmm. um, 114 years ago, mm -hmm. there were a thousand Koreans who uh, departed from the port of Incheon all the way to Mexico. They were uh, essentially sold as indentured servants. 300 of the thousand people eventually went to Cuba mm -hmm. 16 years later. And there, Heronimo was born to an indentured parent servants, servant parents. Mm -hmm. Many colliding ideologies and world affairs happening in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Heronimo uh, ended up becoming the first Korean to attend college in Cuba out of the 300 Koreans. Uh -huh. And one of his classmates was Fidel Castro. Mm. And from there on, he uh, took part in a lot of social movements and he eventually participates in the Cuban Revolution, serves in the Castro government as vice minister, and retires. Mm -hmm. But this is also when uh, the Soviet Union and a series of other communist bloc and nations also collapsed. And Heronimo goes through a serious transformation mm -hmm. about uh, ideological matters, right? Uh, I mean, it, Mind you that it's, it's a time period where there's a colliding, conflicting battle between ideologies, mm -hmm. right? Between capitalism and communism, uh, between America and Cuba, between North Korea and South Korea. Mm -hmm. So Heronimo, you know, being stuck in the middle of all this um, is someone who really struggled with the notion of uh, seeking life, seeking meaning in life. Mm -hmm. Uh, I tell other people who don't know anything about Heronimo that he's just like a uh, Cuban Dosan mm -hmm. Obviously, this, this doesn't do justice to both figures, um, but for me, that's how uh, heroic uh, the life he lived was. He's someone who struggled a lot with, I think, the notion of his dual identities, mm -hmm. how he can be both 100% Cuban and how 100% Korean at the same time. I think the case of Heronimo is interesting because if you look at his life, the first half of his life was 100% Cuban. Cuban. Mm -hmm. He dedicated to the ideals of the Cuban revolution and communism in the beginning. But later, um, there's a transformation. Yes. There's a turning point. Uh -huh. And then afterwards, he dedicates 100% of his, all his energy and passion into reconstructing his sense of Korean identity. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that Heronimo is definitely um, a role model for mm -hmm. many Koreans, not only uh, spread across the world, but also mm -hmm. Koreans, uh, well, Koreans. Now, you worked as a lawyer. You were an attorney before you became a mm -hmm. film director. So mm -hmm. I'd like to ask you the kind of work you were involved in uh, as a lawyer mm -hmm. and uh, what or how your family reacted when you mm. told them about your decision to switch from a lawyer to a film director. How did they react? I'm sure they didn't know that it's going to take this long ah. to produce that film. Um, it seems ages ago since I practiced law, but before this, I was... Uh, working at a Korean government agency in New York mm -hmm. as an in-house counsel. And my primary job was to basically help Korean small and medium companies mm -hmm. uh, come to the U.S. and I would be advising them on uh, in intellectual property and basic corporate law mm. issues so that they, get, they don't get into lawsuits. I right? see. Uh -huh. um, so I was a middleman trying to connect the two worlds together. I see. Yeah. With respect to my parents, uh -huh. uh, so my younger brother, he's also an attorney, oh, yeah. but he's a human rights attorney. Mm. So uh, you can imagine, you know, my parents, they broke their backs to support both of the sons to go through a law school, undergrad, yeah. and one of them became a filmmaker, another a human rights lawyer. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so there's not much of a return on investments on their part, but they've been... Um, they're kind of eccentric. They've always been very supportive ah, yes. of what I do. And um, um, yeah, I, I don't remember a moment where when they forced their will upon our career choices. Ah. And uh, I think they also see the value uh, and the meaning behind the Heronimo work, mm -hmm. right? 
So mm -hmm. now they're fully supportive and uh, they're bragging about their son on social media. Oh, that's wonderful. Media. Yeah. Now I'd like to uh, shift our focus to the people that you met. Mm -hmm. uh, this is after you began your career as a film director. Mm -hmm. uh, we've actually uh, asked you for some photos. We've mm -hmm. gathered some pictures of mm -hmm. your acquaintances. So let's take a look at a few. She is Lee Soo-eun, ah. Ha Soo-eun, Soo the singer. When I first initiated this project, she, she immediately became one of the biggest supporters. Oh, I right? see. Uh -huh. And she's been telling me throughout the whole process, Joseph, I want to do a Jenning Gibu. I want to help you with uh, <clears throat> my singing skills or music skills. Mm -hmm. And quite recently, only three months ago, I asked her, hey, were you serious about the offer all throughout the way? And she's uh -huh. like, yes, I am. Uh -huh. And so I'm, I'm like, hey, can you sing our theme song? <gasps> and so she sang it and it's beautiful and yes. you'll find it on on, on the movie mm -hmm. yeah so uh, monk pom mm -hmm. mm, i've always respected him and i'm a big fan of his podcast as well uh -huh. he's he's also an advocate of finding one's identity uh -huh. uh, for self-enlightenment and empowerment mm -hmm. purposes wow. so i got to meet him and i eventually interviewed him as part of my film mm -hmm. so yeah um, a famous actor mm -hmm. A big, more than an actor, he's an advocate of human rights and refugee rights issues. Yes. I cold messaged him mm -hmm. on social media. Oh. Yeah, and I said, hey, my name is Joseph Chan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm working on this film that I think you can sympathize and empathize with. Uh huh. Uh, he got back to me and said, hey, give me a call when you're in Korea. And then he was able to really, really sympathize with the, the story of my film because mm -hmm. Uh, now he's defending the rights of many refugees and migrants in Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea, the very idea that Koreans were also migrants and refugees. There were even slaves mm -hmm. that went to Mexico and Cuba 100 years ago. Yes. Really, he was able to find a connection in the, the overlap of the two mm -hmm. narratives. Mm -hmm. So um, s since then, he's been you know, pushing me to connect me to other uh, film industry folks. And, I'm very grateful for his contribution. You'd like to support a scholarship foundation to help Korean students in, in, in Cuba? Mm -hmm. Yes, tell yes. us about this. Yeah, I made this proclamation two years ago on a TV program. Uh -huh. um, this is when I was just starting out, and so I was more innocent. <laughs> <laughs> two years not, ago. <laughs> not to say that you know I don't have such intentions, but mm. I just realized uh, the difficulties of you know, making a film distributing mm. and getting gaining profits from a documentary filmmaking. Right. Uh -huh. right? But certainly, if I make any profits from this, uh, I would love to uh, donate and support mm -hmm. uh, to for the Korean students to come overseas mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, to either Korea or to the US to study. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they're, some of their grandparents and great grandparents mm. supported Korea's independence movement all day from Cuba. Yes. Right? Uh, we can't do anything to pay back their kindness and their patriotism. Mm -hmm. But maybe we can do something for the future generations, uh -huh. right? So hopefully I'll make profit. Hopefully this will be distributed throughout Korea. Because mm -hmm. yes. if you think about mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's obviously our story, mm -hmm. you know, our ancestors. It's, right. it's our history. It's right. our story. Yes. Um, I want to ask you from a... Uh, director point of view perspective of mm -hmm. Heronimo, mm -hmm. uh, which aspects or what about the doctor documentary film do you hope that your audiences will pay most attention to or, mm. or which message do you hope to deliver uh, most strongly? Mm. Again, I, I want to make this parallel contrast between the Koreans and the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. uh, how Jewish people dealt with a notion of diaspora was always a wonder to me mm -hmm. because, again, we lost our country for 40 years and people spread all across the world. But Jewish people, they lost their country for 3,000 years. Mm. And, they, and yet they still hold on to their sense of identity and history and roots, yes. right? And I interviewed this one Jewish rabbi who told me that the more you limit the definition of what, what being Jewish is, mm -hmm. Uh, the more self-destructive it becomes, right? Mm. And I, I want to really pose that question in this film. Um, I, I notice the tendency of Koreans wanting to limit the definition of what being truly being Korean is, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
Koreans are limiting what it means to be Korean, mm. the definition itself. My, my message, uh, the message that I, I hope the people will find out from this film is why don't we broaden that concept? Mm -hmm. Why don't we broaden that definition and be more inclusive of whoever that came from this motherland, mm -hmm. uh, even though they're five generations away, they don't look anything like Korean because they're mixed many, many times. Mm -hmm. And maybe they don't even speak Korean or eat Korean food. If they want to retain that sense of identity and if they want to connect with the motherland and the roots, why don't we welcome their efforts, yes. right? Uh -huh. And uh, I think Heronimo, Heronimo was a figure that really tried to reconnect with mm -hmm. his roots. And um, if people, this movie can give an, an opportunity for people to really, to contemplate on the notion of Korean diaspora, mm -hmm. uh, that would be my only wish. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much for your time. And I do wish you the best of luck with Heronimo. Thanks. And uh, yes, I hope that your hope or dreams come true about how, I, I truly hope that this film, docu documentary film, will help to uh, spread awareness, uh, mm -hmm. shed light on Korean diasporas. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much once again for joining us on the show. Thank you so much. 감사합니다. 감사합니다.